Shalom, Shalom, my friend, my brother, Black Want. Yes, sir. Shalom. All right, man. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum salam, my friend, my brother. Yes, sir. We back at it. <laughs> yep, yep, all right. That's all right. part two, a little bit of a cleanup. Yep, uh, part two. Uh, just to clear, just just to get clear, um, are you hearing me? Do you figure if you're hearing me on some type of delay? I think I have a little delay going on with you. That's why we might over talk each other sometimes. Oh, okay. You're good with me on my end. You're good. Okay, okay, excellent. All right, you can hear me well. Everything's good. Yes, sir. All right. So how's your day been, brother? How, how's it, how's it go out there on the West Coast today, man? They tell me it never rains in California. Oh, man, uh, it's been raining. We went through a period of rain, man. We, we're we kind of easing up. We're having more sunshine, and it's getting better. It's getting better. All right, excellent. What about you? Well, that's good, man. Well, I'm up here in cold, cold Canada, man, so it's, it's cold, man. <laughs> it's actually supposed to warm up to about four degrees. Uh, I don't know what that is in the conversion uh, over in the States. Wow. We were, we were sitting at about mi minus 12 degrees. Well, wow, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> Surviving the Eskimos, man. Yeah, Surviving man. Eskimos. Yeah, that's that's a that's a opposite. You cold, I'm over here. It's nice. Right now, I mean, I can tell you the temperature. The temperature over here is, um, last time I looked, let me see. It is, man, it is right now 44. Right now. 44, all right. So I think, I think for us that might be around the 20, 22, 26. Six degrees or something like that, maybe. Either wow! Way, man. It, yeah, it's nice out there. And I'm in the, I'm in the where I'm at. I get a taste of all the seasons. So if I was to go like 45 minutes away from me from here, it would be warmer. Oh really? Okay, I see. Yeah. So, but you don't get you don't get winter winter. No, no, no. no. I think it probably okay, it okay, probably okay. snow. More, no more than three to five times at the most, and it wasn't much. And that's just okay, where man, I'm at. Lucky. That's just where I'm at. Forty-five minutes from where I'm at, they don't get no snow. Yeah, it's weird. It's funny how that works out, man. Because I shovel the mountain of storm snow off of my driveway is probably what you got in your whole city in one snowfall. Ha <laughs> ha! Yep, all the snow we get. <laughs> It goes right on those mountains. And then right now, when I look at the mountains, they're all green. Right. Yeah. Okay, I see. I see. Yep. All right, so you're probably getting more snow uh, uh, runoff from the mountain breeze and all of that, too. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, yeah, the Chinook winds, or what they call it up here, Chinook winds. Yep, that's what it is. Yeah. All right, makes sense. California, my my parents, my parents, um, back in the in the late sixties, I guess they're from Barbados, tropical island Barbados. Uh, they moved to Toronto. I guess they had it when they were younger, in their twenties. I guess they had a chance to go to California. And growing up, I played football, man, and I was like, man, why on earth didn't you guys go to California? Why did you come to cold? Old city Toronto, man. But right, yeah. <laughs> Toronto. Wow. Raptors, man. Yeah. That's different, man. That is different. I very rarely spoke to people from Canada. A few people. Okay, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Right? They from um, where they from? Or all over mainly, or you find that they they coming from Toronto? Uh, Toronto. Yeah, yeah it's, Toronto. It's, we're, we're it's been here. a while ago. <laughs> it's been a while ago, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're out here, man. Toronto cats, we're out here. 
Yes, sir. All right, brother. So how 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 do you how do you figure you you want to approach this? Okay. I, I, I don't what I, I want to. I don't. Yeah. What I was yeah, going to yeah. do is I was going to set a timer this time. And what I was going to do is I was going to give you 20 minutes uh, to just let you um, just go at it and just lay down your whole Matthew 21, 43 breakdown. And I'll let you get 20 minutes and then, you know, I'll do 20 minutes presenting my um, interpretation of Matthew 21, 43. And then, you know, the last, um, you know, we'll do like, I'm trying to do like an hour, the last 10 to 20 minutes, somewhere around there, we'll just do questions. We'll just go back and forth with questions. You know what I mean? We can do it like yeah, that. Yeah, sounds good. All right. You can yeah, ask sure. me to, you, you know, I can give you like, let's say I'll give you uh 10 minutes and um, you ask me the questions and um, 10 minutes um, you ask me the questions, okay? Okay? So we can have more of a structure this time, but you know, you're my guest and I- I'll let you go ahead and go first and I'm going to set that timer whenever you want me, let me know when you're ready. Uh, about 20 minutes you're saying, right? Yep. Okay. How's that sound? Fair? Sounds excellently fair. So just yeah, just let me know when you're ready and we'll, we'll get to it. All right, let's go. You're all, all set. right, all right. Uh, greetings and blessings, House of David family. Uh, this is Brother Yata El Yatil Ben Titus. Uh, hailing from the north side of Canada, your cousins to the north, uh, coming from the family, and my family, my cherished and beloved kings and empresses, princes, princesses, uh, um, truth seekers, and the Israelites of Yeshua. All right, love y'all, love, peace, and charity to everybody in the house of David. So, I guess I'll pertain to our last discussion first first thing that I, I'd like to take the opportunity to do is uh, just clear up some things because brother when we spoke I, I I popped up out of my out of my sleep at around three just before 3 30 something like that I think okay got, we got into the messaging and then I think we got on the phone around uh, four but I want to check my phone here. Somewhere, somewhere around 4 ish 4.45, somewhere around that time, a.m., uh, my time, Eastern time. So okay. needless, to, needless to say, <laughs> I was somewhere between dream and awake. <laughs> all right, so, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. So when, you were cor- so when you were correcting me, coupling all that with the delay on the phone, I, I was missing a lot, and I was just deep into my thoughts trying to get to the point so I did miss miss the fact that I did write Ishmael and um, some other things um, the, the, the householder right right and and the Lord right so yes. so I can see that you're right that the Lord is the father the householder I'm I'm contending is is the Lord the son the son I right? Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, as as uh, my family and uh, my my family, my group of families, how we we call on him, um, and uh, was that it? Yeah, yeah. Him being the householder, the servants being uh, the prophets, and um, what was? Uh, let me just look at them again over here. The householder, the servants, and the husbandmen being the individuals who he was talking to and giving the parable to in contrast to what was going on in Israel in that time. Uh, And according to all of uh, their sins and abominations and the things that they had done up until that point in time, conceding to the Romans who had rulership over them, uh... Um, basically, 
not worshiping in their God, because the Romans, we know, a thing about the Romans is that they have rule. They don't really care about what you worship. As long as you're paying their tribute, you're free to do what you want and keep peace and order wherever they have their empire set up and their garrison set up. So, But at the same time, you can still say they did... Um, relax and sell out on certain integrities in order to appease the Romans. So all of this all together, just as Yahweh I said, give unto Caesar what Caesar's, give unto God what is God's in the temple. So as we go on to, let me take a look, if we go back to, so I just wanted to clear that up, that, okay. that those things were actually, yeah, yeah, those things needed, we, we or myself just kind of flew right over them without uh, probably uh, giving correction, even though I said, yeah, I agree with 99% of everything that you were saying. So I, that's how I was, that's how I was thinking on it. But my words in my mind weren't matching up with my thinking and what you were saying, even though I had agreed that your breakdown on it was right as to who those individuals are. So just to clear that up. So moving forward. All right. Matthew 21 and the 43. If we go to Matthew 20, starting at the one, for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them uh, he sent them into his vineyard. Uh, if we go to <clears throat> is it the nine? <clears throat> oh, okay, hold on. Uh, Sorry about right. that, brother. Can I can, can I get a can I get a, a stop time for a second? Uh, yeah, right. I'll, I'll permit that. I'll permit that. Okay, thank you. One second. Just let me know when you want me to start it back up for you. Okay, so I right, start it back up. All right. All right, thank you. All right, so back to the 20 and to the 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder. All right, so as, as we agree, householder... Is uh, is the Lord, or as I call him, the Lord Yahweh. Right. So if we go to the twenty-one, okay. And if we know the atmosphere of what's happening in Jerusalem at that point in time, uh, with the priests, the Pharisees, and and all of that, uh, when His word is coming out and being preached, they're all about. Mm, Turning the people away from him and keeping them sighted on them. So when it's when it's when it comes to seventy A.D. and why that actually happened and why the nation, the whole entire nation of Israel, not just because they rejected him, it's because when they were in the courts, the Pharisees, the scribes, the priests, the chief priests, and all of that, in order to keep their authority over the people, their power. They went around and saying, tell everybody, Barabbas, Barabbas, Barabbas. So when Pilate said, who do you want? Uh, this man of Nazareth? Or do you want Barabbas? They said, give us Barabbas. They said, let his blood be on our heads and the heads of our children. So that was signed, sealed, delivered, 70 AD. And then throughout the generational curse on that because they said that on their heads and the heads of their children. <laughs> so if we go to now Matthew 21 and 2 
starting at the 23. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests, the elders, and the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority dost thou does thou these things? And who gave thee this authority, right, to come in there and start teaching? And Yahweh tried to answer and said, uh, I also will ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do this thing. The baptism of John, whence was it from heaven or of men? All right, so we go to the 33, okay? And he says, because he's still talking to them, all the way from the 23 to the 33 and to the 43 all the way down. This is their conversation. He says, here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and had, how much time do I have? Sorry, if I could just get a, a, a clock on that. Uh, you got 11 and a half. Okay. Thank you. And hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and lent it out to husband men, all right, which is them, and went into a far country and when the time of the of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. Okay, and the husbandmen took the servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. So the husbandmen, being them that he's speaking to, because he said, "If you can tell me the meaning of this parable, right, um, then he will." All right, the baptism of John, once was it from heaven it came? And he'll tell them by what authority he is able to speak in the temple, all right? Uh-huh. So last of all, so so if we go to the 37, he says, but last of all, he sent unto, he sent unto them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. So he's talking about himself, present time, right there. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, and right now he's prophesying to them even in going to the cross. This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. What's his inheritance? Israel, the people, are his inheritance. And they caught him. And all right, So if we go now, now he says at the 40, when the Lord... The Lord, the, when the Father, as we know him, the Most High God, when the Lord, therefore, of the vineyard cometh on the day of visitation, is, 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 is that, that's that end prophecy, the day of visitation. What will he do unto those husbandmen, which 70 AD and all that included, right? Here's what their response is, because they have no clue in this whole parable from twenty from Matthew twenty twenty one twenty three to the point we're at, that that whole parable came to result to that question in Matthew twenty one forty. What will he do unto those husbandmen when the Lord come on the day of visitation? They foolishly answer and say, "They say unto him, Who is the day?" Back to the 23. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people, those who lead the tribes, those the heads of the nations, uh, the powerful, the rulers, okay, um, came unto him. All right? These are, the, these are the people who the people pay their, their, um, their tithing to. At the end of, or uh, uh, every once every year and all that, pay the taxes to everything. They have the financial grip over the people and they have the authority of the temple. That's their kingdom, their power. That's where they rule because the Romans rule over all of them because it is the Greco Roman Empire. All right. So as we go. <clears throat> Back to the 40. They say unto him, this is their response to all of that, right? Because they have no clue who's talking to them. But them in their thought that they believe they're righteous, they say this, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen. In other words, 
going to take it from them and give it to those who follow the Son. As, we, as it goes back, he says, but when the, in the 38, but when the husbandman saw the son, or sorry, if we go back to the 37, but last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. That's the, that's the thing that must be done, reverence his son. So those who did, they're going to inherit the kingdom. The meek shall inherit the kingdom. The, the kingdom is for the righteous at the last days, because the kingdom that they're talking about, if we get down to, all right, so if we understand the 41, that's their response, that uh, he will take other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits, the nine, the, the fruits of the Spirit of God in their seasons. All right, throughout the dispensation of time until the last days. And after the last days, that's when they shall fully rule over all governments, all powers, just like we can compare it to the UN. All right, and, and, um, you not, and how the UN sits up, and how the US sits on top of uh, NATO and all of these things. If we go to the 43, sorry, to the 40, yeah, to the 43. He says, therefore, say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Uh, when he says the kingdom of God, it's not, he's not just saying the kingdom because there's, there's breakdowns in the scriptures where it's kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdoms, the domains, kingdoms of the earth. Uh, nations, all these different things, but the kingdom of God is always going to be heaven and and earth. Everything on earth that is underneath the heavens, He rules heaven and earth. Um, we can't always look at kingdoms and say that's not of God because it's a wicked kingdom. When He says He does the good and He does the evil, all things serve His purpose to bring forth His ultimate resolve his ultimate, to bring his ultimate fruition of uh, um, purpose and plan through, as he has promised it in the last days, that it shall be a righteous government, it shall be a righteous kingdom, and all in it shall be righteous, and they shall serve the Lord their God, and all shall know... Um, and all shall know and, and know and bow and worship to the name of God's power. So you have four and a half. <laughs> all right, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Um. Well, I think pretty much I uh I might be good there. All right, I might be good there. So All right. uh, I think I, I, I cleared up the mistakes from the first uh, misunderstandings from the first uh, conversation that we had. Uh, we're in line with that. And um, I'll just leave it there with uh, my comparison of who he's talking to and the kingdom being their authority over the people, the temple, and... Uh, Thank you for the opportunity to speak, brother. Go ahead. All right. Okay. So you had about three and a half left. Um. Uh. First of all, I just want to say, was I was I respectful? Did I let you speak? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself twenty minutes and. I'm going to start right now. Okay, greetings, my brother. Greeting to you and to yours. Um, and um, it was a blessing, um, I believe, to have met you. And I want to go straight to the point. Um, now, when you said the Lord um, 
in your mind, you was thinking of Jesus. But when I was saying the Lord, I was speaking of God Almighty. I wasn't speaking of um, Jesus. So in the parable, my breakdown is the householder, I believe, is God Almighty. And the vineyard is his law that he entrusted the nation of Israel with the law. Okay, and then it goes on to the husbandman. And I believe that the husbandman is Israel. Okay, and I believe that the servants are the prophets. And I agree that the heir is Jesus. However, I believe in the parable it is a story of Jesus's murder on biblical record, okay? Coming from the Gospels, coming from Paul. Like, he was not killed, actually. Just like the story of Joseph, okay? Joseph and Jesus have amazing similarities. And if you look at Joseph's life and you look at Jesus' lives, they're, they they have so much stuff in common, their names being a J, okay? They both being betrayed. And um, Joseph was thrown into a pit, and uh, he was about to be killed. He was about to be killed. However, the Ishmaelites came to the rescue, and Judah agreed to not shed blood to his brothers, but to sell him. OK, and they sold him to the Ishmaelites. However, they found a kid goat. They killed it. They put it on his coat and they made their father to believe that he was dead. However, Jesus or excuse me, rather, Joseph was not dead. He actually was in Egypt. OK, going on to be the governor of Egypt. And long story short, Jacob believed that his, his son was dead. His sons had to go buy corn. And then Joseph, he recognized his brothers and he played a trick on his brothers and got to the point where Jacob ended up believing that his father, I mean, Jacob actually believed that Joseph was not dead and he didn't believe it at first. He was like, man, you know, he's alive, you know, and come to find out he actually was alive. Now, the same nation of people that saved Joseph in that day is the same nation of people who boldly declares not only that Jesus was not killed or crucified, but Allah took him. So the same people that rescued Joseph is the same people with the answer that Jesus is not killed. He wasn't crucified. Going on um, with the Matthew 21 to the 43. I'm going to read that. Because this I say to you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruit. Now, that word nation actually means a Gentile, heathen, non-Israelite people. Jesus could have said the kingdom will be given to the Israelites. He said Israelites in the Bible. He could have said the kingdom will be given to the lost sheep. He used the word lost sheep in the Bible. But for in this instance, he literally says it will be given to another Nation, another nation. Now, I want to go on to another translation of this verse. And this is in the Bible Hub. And um, it reads, Because of this, I say to you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and it will be given to an ethnicity producing its fruits. Because the word nation actually means ethnos. 
It will be given to another nation. Now, you brought out how Israelites, uh, Israel has 12 nations. Well, Israelites have 12 tribes, okay, but they're one nation, okay? Judah, all the tribes are all Israelites. That is one singular nation. Even though they have 12 tribes and That still makes up one nation. Going on, I wanted to bring out the fact that I brought out about the fig tree. Jesus came to a fig tree, expecting fruit to be on it, and there was no fruit on the tree. And so he curses the fig tree, and then he says these key words, Let no fruit grow on thee, henceforth forever. Okay, now when you look at the fig tree, This is common knowledge to everybody that studies the Bible, okay? The fig tree represents Israel, okay? And I have scripture after scripture after scripture. There's a whole parable that I don't have time to go into in Jeremiah 24, speaking of the nation of Israel as the fig tree. Then I have Hosea 9, 10. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at her first time. But they went to Baal Peor and separated themselves unto that shame. And their abominations were according as they have loved. Then going on to Jeremiah chapter 8, 1 through 3, it speaks of the kings of Judah God bringing out the bones of the kings of Judah, the princes, the priests, the prophets out of the grave, spreading them before the sun, moon, and the stars of heaven. The people love, the people serve, and these people actually worshiped these people. The the Bible says in verse 2, they shall not be gathered nor be buried. They shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. And verse 3 says, and death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family. Now he is speaking of Judah, which remain in all the places whither I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. And verse 13 goes on to say, I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree. And the leaves shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Now, when God Almighty speaks, it's real. He told Israel, What I've given you is going to pass from you. This is something that the Israelites could not grasp. They always believed that they were high and above all nations, that God loves them, that he would never choose other nations. But as we see, when the children of Israel went into the Assyrian captivity, that was the northern kingdom. Then Judah went into Babylon. Then they went into the Persian and Mede captivity. Then they went into the Greco-Roman captivity. And then ultimately they went into the Roman captivity. So the nation of Israel was getting closer and closer and closer to the edge. By the time Jesus and John the Baptist came on the scene, they said Israel should have been fruitful. And they was not fruitful. Even John the Baptist in his famous speech in Luke chapter 3, he said, bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. And don't begin to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father, for God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. John the Baptist got on the ethnicity of the Jew and Jesus got on the ethnicity of the Jew. He called the Jews serpents. He called them devils. He called them vipers. And then when he was saying the kingdom shall be given to another nation, he was speaking of another people. Also, I wanted to show you that word kingdom. That word kingdom is basilea, which actually means royal power, kingship, dominion, rule, they wasn't interest they wasn't interested in so much of fruits god wanted them to bear fruit they was looking for that dominion again to rule because the kingdom of israel had dwindled and they was not on top anymore this was something that the disciples asked jesus and he did not say it would be given to him he said it you it's not even for you to know the time and seasons what the lord has put into his own powers a lot of people like to read and say that he said he would give it to them 
But that would contradict what he said in Matthew 21, 43. Now, I got nine minutes left, and I'm going to keep going. Now, when I look at Ezra, this is going to be 2 Ezra chapter 2, verse 10. The Lord says to Ezra, announce to my new people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I had planned to give to Israel. Now, if we just listen to that verse, he's saying, announce to my new people. Okay, the King James reads, announce to my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I had planned to give to Israel. So we see right here in this verse, Israel was excluded. Okay, he's talking to his people. Now I want to go to 2 Ezra 1.24. People of Israel, what can I do with you? People of Judah, you refuse to obey me. So I, speaking of God, will turn to other nations and make them my people that they will keep my laws. Now, there are Israelite camps today that I can admire them because they don't accept the Apocrypha. They say they don't accept the Apocrypha because the Apocrypha agrees that the kingdom will go to another nation. But there are Israelite camps that do believe in the Apocrypha, and they still believe that the kingdom is going to them, which is very, very strange. Now I want to keep going. And it says, because you have abandoned me, I will abandon you. You will beg me for mercy, but I will show you none. See, the Bible is a two-edged sword. I've always told people, you can make the Bible say whatever you want to say. You can find scriptures that say God will have mercy on Israel. You can find scriptures that say God won't have mercy on Israel. You can have scriptures that justify alcohol. Then you have scriptures that condemn alcohol. You have scriptures that uh, gave um, the permission for multiple wives. Then you have a scripture from Paul where he forbid multiple wives. Okay, so the Bible is like, it's like a, it speaks two different things. OK, the Bible says that Jesus carried his own cross and then the rest of the gospel says Simon the Cyrene carried it. So many people have this same common knowledge about the Bible. You can make it say whatever you want. It. You can make it say whatever you want. We have gay Christians today with a King James Bible on their pulpit authorizing gay marriage. OK, through their own what we call Bible interpretation. That's why I always ask people, I want Bible scripture. I don't want you to interpret it. I want actual Bible scripture. And I'm showing you actual Bible scripture where it is saying, I will give my people, my new people, the kingdom which I would have given to Jerusalem. Now, given to yeah Israel. So now I'm going to keep going. And this is going to be verse 26 of 2 Ezra chapter 1. When you pray to me, I will not hear you. You never hesitate to commit murder. Your hands are stained with blood of those you have killed. Those are the prophets. Is It is not me that you have betrayed. You have betrayed yourself. The Lord Almighty says, I have pleaded with you as a father pleased with his son, as a mother pleased with her daughters, or as a nursemaid pleased with their small children. I begged you to be my people so that I could be your God, to be my children so that I could be your father. Now listen to the famous quote. I have gathered you together as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, but now what can I do with you? I will banish you from my sight. When Jesus came to that fig tree and he seen nothing but leaves, he said, you know what, Israel, it's time for you to leave. It's time for you to go. You know what, y'all been some spoiled brats, okay? Now it's time for me to take the kingdom and give it to another nation. Now I want to go to verse 31. And even when you offer sacrifices to me, I will turn away from you. So sacrifices was not going to help Israel. It was always obedience is what God wanted. When he pulled them out of Egypt, he didn't pull them out to offer sacrifices. He pulled them out to obey him. Your religious festivals, your new moon celebrations of your circumcisions, ceremonies mean nothing to me. Don't know what you want. I sent to you my servants, the prophets, but you killed them, mutilated their corpse. 
I will make you pay for murdering them. The Lord Almighty says your temple is abandoned. I will scatter you like straw blown away by the wind. Your children will have no descendants because they rejected my commandments and did what I hated just as you did. To this day, the Israelites, we have no paperwork that we're Jews. Okay, all we can do is claim to go by the Deuteronomy 28 curses, but we have no more genealogy. There's no more scribes generating Israel. It all stopped. OK, nobody is being wrote down in the book like it used to. All that stuff dwindled because God kept his word. Verse 35, I will give your home to a people that is about to appear. They will believe me, even though they have not heard of me. That is speaking of another nation. Both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom had experienced God. It says they will do what I command, even though I never performed any miracles for them. OK, Israel witnessed the miracles, all tribes. Verse 36, they have seen no prophets. I love this because it says prophets with the S. OK, which makes me to believe this is the nation of Ishmael because they've had one prophet and we boldly declare that there is no more messengers. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. I take to witness the grace of the people to come whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, Israel witnessed the God of Israel. They seen the pillar of smoke, the cloud, the, they experienced God. OK, Moses was the man that met God face to face. And even he didn't even get to make it for the, to the uh, promised land. Because of not of Israel's sins, but because of him smiting the right twice when he was told to speak to it. So it says in spirit, they will believe the thing that I say. Now I'm going to my time. I got two minutes and I'm taking advantage of it because these scriptures right here is scriptures. A lot of people online do not get. They do not. They haven't even heard it. OK, so when I'm going back to the Matthew 21, 43. I'm considering everything that Jesus said. He said, the kingdom will be taken from you and given to another nation. And he lines perfectly up with Ezra. Jesus was the one that said, oh, it's Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How often did I want to gather you like a hen gather her chickens, but you wasn't willing. That is the same statement Ezra said. Everything that Ezra is saying the same thing Jesus is saying. Now, I have one last scripture, which is really going to take it home. And this is going to be in the same book, 2 Ezra, chapter 2. And it makes it real, real plain. This is going to be 2 Ezra, chapter 2. And I want to go to verse uh, 30. Um, I want to go to verse 33. Ezra's received a charge of the Lord upon Mount Oreb that I should go unto Israel. But when I came to them, they set me at naught and despised my commandment of the Lord. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen. So he was sent to Israel. Israel wouldn't listen. Now he is sent to the heathen. It says, O ye heathen, that hear and understand, look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest for he is nigh at hand for he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my savior openly. Oh, oh, receive the gift that is given you speaking to the heathen and be glad giving thanks unto him that led you to the heavenly kingdom. So we have many scriptures speaking of the kingdom going to another ethnos, going to another nation. OK, now I finished up. I'm done. I got about 21 seconds, but I'm going to call it that. You still there, my brother? Uh, yeah, I'm still. I'm right here. I'm right here. All right. All right so all right. now what we can do is we can do the questions. OK, now, if you want, we can do the same order. I can ask you questions uh, for about 10 minutes 
and you can answer how long you want to answer them. And then another 10 minutes, you can ask me and we can do it that way. Do you want to ask the questions first or do you want to be asked the question? Yeah, I'll ask first. Okay. Let's do that. All right. Well, let me set this. Let me set it. Let me set it. Let me set it. All right. One, two, three. All right. Well, first of all, I want to say that it's an excellent job. Um, I agreed with a lot and a lot, a lot of what you said. All right. Um, I just think that I'm looking at it kind of different ways. So there was a verse. <clears throat> I, I couldn't get it all in time. There was one where you said that the, the, uh, he shall give it to a nation that has not known him, not done no miracles, not known his miracles. Yes. And they haven't had prophets. What, uh, what, where did you get that from again? This is going to be Second Ezra chapter 1, and that is exactly verse 30. The, actually, I go from verse 24, because that's where he specifically talks about giving the kingdom to another people. But where it says they have not seen no prophets, that's going to be verse 36. Okay. If we, uh, I just, quick question, <clears throat> all right, because if you go to 34, he says, and your children shall not be fruitful. Yes. Right? So prophesy, we can say when, how shall I come? He, that, that's fulfilled. He didn't see no fruit on that fig tree. If we yes. go to the 35, your houses will I give to a people that shall come. That yes. shall come, which not having heard of me yet shall believe me to whom I have showed no signs yet they shall do that. I have commanded thee. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. And then to the 36, as you said, they have seen no prophets, none, not one. No, yet no, no, no. S S plural. Hold on. I, I hope it, they have seen no prophets. No, they have seen no prophets. They haven't seen any. Yet, they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. Now, when, I say, when, when you say, when you um, give the breakdown of nations, not disagreeing with that because that's what's in strong and that's what's there, but throughout the Bible, the word nations is used, nation, um, the two kingdoms, a kingdom still a nation. Uh, so you could say the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom of Judah, the nation of Israel, the nation of Judah, uh, to be conformed back into one nation, which will be called Jerusalem, New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, and all those who will be in it. Right as he as as I pointed out, he's got his. He's got his uh, those who are called by his name in all places. So, so brother, if it's if it's a Gentile nations, we know that in this in Genesis, the Gentiles are the sons of of Gomer. Ishmael, being a Hebrew, uh, he's, he can't be a Gentile, and and there it says they have seen no prophets. What I'm contending is that everything that you you explained, everything how you came up with it, if you go to Matthew 21, the whole thing, he already knows all of this. It's that's the sum, that's the summization of the whole entire of all those prophecies, all those years, all those kingdoms before. That's the hill of it. That's their sins have reached up to heaven at that point. All right, so. My question is, if the Gentiles are specifically a blood group of people, how do you equate Ishmael, coming from Abraham, who is a Hebrew, a Shemite, to be a Gentile, which are Japhites? Okay. No, no. You said Japhites. Who, who's Japhites? Gentiles, there's Shem, 
Ham and Japheth came from Noah. So the Hebrews, Abraham, comes from Shem. Uh, the Egyptians, uh, Canaanites, uh, the Hittites, they come from Ham, Ham, Cush. Uh, yeah, well, Cush is grandson of Ham. And then you get Gomer, Ashkenaz, um, all of those. Amalek, they come from Japheth. Okay. And so if Japheth, let's just get it. All right. I got. I understand your question. I got you. I got you. Right. I got you. Understand. If, uh, that, if that word nature. If that now we know it's, it's translated from the Greek. Um, Greek will even say there is Latin in there. Uh, going back because the, the Romans and the Greeks did speak Latin in those days. A lot of people just think that it's Greek, but it really was Latin or a form of Latin, a, mer- a pure form of Latin. Um, so. If we, if we go into the translation from where it's coming from into the Greek and then into the English, even from Strong's and whatever, we, we can we can still assert to ourselves that nation in the word itself in the English, we can still apply it to what's being written right here because it is in the English. Now, we, we do understand what it means coming from the Strong's, but then you have to prove... How is an Ishmaelite, a Gentile, when they're not from that bloodline? They are Shemite Hebrews. Okay. All right. Well, this is the thing. The word Gentile means nations. Okay. All right. So when you look at Gentiles, you have the word that's a Gentile, and then you have people that are considered real Gentiles, okay? Now, this is going to answer your question in 1 Ezra 8.69. The nation of Israel, the princes, the priests, and Levites, have not put away from them the strange people of the land, nor of the pollutions of the Gentiles, to wit. Now, to wit is who I'm about to describe as the Gentiles. Of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Pharisites, the Jebusites, the Moabites, the Moabites came from Shem, the Egyptians and Edomites, Edomites came from Shem. OK, but they're still considered Gentiles. OK, so when you when Jesus was saying it's going to be given to another nation, he was speaking of another ethnic group. And that word is ethnos. OK, so you got to understand the nation of Ishmael, they are Gentiles because they did not come from Isaac. OK, just like Esau, the Edomites, they are considered Gentiles because they didn't come from Jacob. Same thing with the Moabites. The Bible just called the Moabites Gentiles and they just called the Edomites Gentiles. The Ishmaelites, they are Gentiles. And that's first. That's first. I, Ezra's I, I, eight sixty nine. I understand that. Pardon. That's first. Oh, Ezra's oh, eight sixty nine, and that's that's common common knowledge uh, amongst all Israelite camps. I've actually, like I said, I've been in the Israel Israelite camp for a year and a half, and the Gentiles are any nation. Other than the Israelites, because the Israelites were set high above. They were they are special. They are the people that is called that was considered. They was considered at one time. They was considered the chosen seed. Okay, but when you read first Ezra's eight and sixty nine, the nation of Israel, nation, ethnos, right? Right. Yeah. The the princes, the priests, and the Levites, that's them. If you go back to Matthew, same thing, Matthew 21 and 23, have not put away from them the strange people of the land. Who are they? The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Parasites, the Jebusites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, the Edomites. Nor the pollutions of the Gentiles. The pollutions... Okay, it's like, check this out. You and I, we're up in these scriptures. We got brothers who are up in the streets. They haven't put away the pollutions of the gang life. 
the street life that didn't come from them, where did it come from? It came from Al Capone, them guys, the Italian mob, the, the Italian mafia. So when those guys went political, there was a vacuum in the crime world and the drug world. Then came the pimp life. Then came the gangster life. Then came the real Rick Ross. The real Rick Ross. <laughs> All right. So when they, so, got, so what did we do? We, you got, we took up the pollutions. You got ten seconds, of man. The mafia, those Gentiles. The pollutions has nothing to do with uh, who they are, what they are. It has everything to do with what they're doing. Yeah, bro, you, 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 your time is up. You spent a lot of your time instead of asking me the question was explaining the question. So your, your, your okay. time of ask, your time can, of asking me questions is can I, up. Can I, can I, uh, uh, can I, can I ask you my question based on that? What's up? Is the, are the pollution, do you believe the pollutions to be the actual people or do you believe it to be that they took up and it says that they took up all right, nor uh, strange people of the land. They didn't put them away. They didn't wipe them off the land, like he said. Nor the pollutions of the Gentiles, their behaviors to wit, to wit, to mind, your wit, your mind, the things that they do. So are you saying that it is not their behaviors they took up, or are you saying that they are Gentiles they're Gentiles. Outside, or, if you're not an Israelite, you're a Gentile. I mean, is that simple? They, oh, then my question would be, how would they be a Gentile nation? Because then you would have to say the nation of Israel, when they took up the pollutions of the Gentiles, they're Gentiles too. Just as Paul says, you were once called Gentiles. So at, the, at this point, everybody's a Gentile. During the time of Paul, okay, when you if if you want to go to Paul, okay, the Israelites, okay, that were actually um, living as Gentiles. Now that's different, okay. That's different. You could you could be an Israelite that was actually coming out of the Greek captivity, so you know you were a Grecian, but you wasn't an Israelite, okay? But you got to understand the word that was put in there. Jesus said the kingdom will be given to another nation. He didn't say the kingdom will be given to um, Zebulon. He didn't say the northern kingdom. He didn't say the southern kingdom. He's literally saying the kingdom will be given to another nation. And plus, you brought out the word 12 nations. No. There's a such thing as two nations in Israel, and that is called the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. That is the southern kingdom consisting of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's the southern kingdom, okay? That's considered one nation because the kingdom was split during the time of Solomon. All the other tribes represent one nation, which is the northern kingdom. OK, and so that's why Matthew 21, 43, you're not going to find many Israelite camps doing any videos on that. They'll do videos on John 3, 16 all day, but they don't want to talk about Matthew 21, 43, because Matthew 21, 43 is speaking of the kingdom going to another race. Another race is not talking about uh, another Israelite. Is going to a whole nother different race, a person who is not a Jew, period. OK, and this is what Moses told the, the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 32, 21. He said, I'm going to provoke you to jealousy with a foolish nation. He warned Israel of that long time ago. The problem with Israelites is like they can't. It's like just think about this. You date a girl. She loved you. Y'all had it going on. And you know what? She says it's, it's over. Okay. The Bible says God divorced Israel. He divorced Israel. And according to the law of marriage, if a man divorce a wife, can he go back to her? No, you can't go back to her. She can go back to another. She can marry another person. 
but she can't go back to the same man. God divorced Israel. And so the only way he could save Israel is through a Gentile messenger. Okay. But I don't want to take up all the time. I know you, you got to give me 10 minutes to ask you questions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Go. Ahead. All right. Your turn then. All right. So I'm, I'm prepared because I heard you say some stuff and I, and I, and I want to start my time clock right here. All right. It is started. Okay. Okay. So my question is, how could the husbandmen be only just the scribes and the Pharisees and not the nation of Israel? How the husbandmen could be the scribes and the Pharisees. The, the chief priests and the rulers, yeah. Okay. What made you believe that uh, when he's talking about the husbandmen, that um, that just meant the, the, the chief priests and the scribes? Let's go to the husbandmen being the chief priests and the scribes, Bible verse. Right. Well, if we go to, I'm just looking straight at the parable, right? When he says that he's talking to them. Okay. And 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 in every parable that he draws upon that he speaks to them, he's always speaking about them. <laughs> All right. So. Okay. Oh, okay. When he, when he says, did you never read the scriptures, the stone which the builder rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Is this the Lord's doing? And it, it, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. What they didn't understand is that what he's saying is his power and his authority has arrived. His word for all those who believe. So, to the 33, here another parable. I'm just going to keep it to the parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard. You're saying that's the Most High Father, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll hold it to that. And hedged it round about and dig the wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to the and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. Now, going all the way back to Exodus, the husbandmen were Aaron, the sons of Aaron, and all of them. Okay, so when he did all of that, planted the vineyard and hedged it out roundabout, that was him giving them the land of Canaan as promised, even growing it back then. It's where he's drawing all of it out. And then the Lord... Right, he went back to his place because even as he's even in Jeremiah he said that he turned he turned his back to us, showed us his back parts. Right, so the husband men up until that point in time became the priests, husband men like that's the many of them, those who basically have the authority over the wine press, all that all that was established. All that was established from the Lord to Moses, and then all the way to their time, all right? And it built a, sorry, and when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it, all right? So that when righteousness can take over into the kingdom, because the kingdom of God is righteousness, and the husbandman took his servants to beat one and kill another and stone another. Well, that just says exactly who they are right there. Because they're the ones who did it to retain their power. Whenever, 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 um, even Isaiah and then he would be speaking to them, calling them the heathens and all that. But he would say, he would say to his people, or at the point where he says, 
shut up the truth with within thyself until the end. Those are all Israelites, those are all his people, because even he knew that there are souls that go through the dispensation of time. Right? So, that verse right there, to me, in that parable, because I know he's speaking to them from the 23, tells me that the husbandmen are them. The priests, the servants, I'm sorry, the priests, the elders, all those who are the gatekeepers of the people of Israel at that point in time concerning matters of the temple. Okay. All right. I got an, I got another question. I, I, where you said Israel has 12 nations. How could that be so when in the book of Revelations, the tribe of Dan is mentioned, missing? Wasn't the tribe of Dan absorbed? I, I I can't I can't figure my head to go to those to those cars right now, bro. Um, but I know something happened to them. They got cut off. They did something, and the Lord completely cut them off. Okay, so you're saying God will never completely cut off Israel, but He cut completely cut Dan off. I guess so, bro. Huh? I would guess so, because Dan is just one nation, one tribe. Once again, bring it to the mount. When the Mosai said he was going to destroy them, he was willing to cut everybody off. And he said he'll make a great nation out of the Moses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So oh. when... Okay. When he, said, when, he said, when he said to put that you shall be destroyed... You shall be destroyed. Yeah, he's that's what he says in Deuteronomy twenty eight Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty four. Uh, all I mean the whole from fifteen to sixty eight, there is no r- wiggle room, there is no savior in that. He said he, he, if you look at Deuteronomy twenty eight, if you keep the commandments, you will remain a nation. But if you disobey the commandments, then what's going to happen to you? You're going to be destroyed. Not just one nation. Not just one nation. This is talking about the whole entire tribe of Israel. And I have one scripture real quick. Um, you know, before this time will go off. Right here where it says, um, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 17, 20, it says, And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. And that's including Judah, because he says in verse 18, therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and he removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah. But Judah also kept not the commandments of the Lord, their God, But walked in the statutes of Israel, they followed after the northern kingdom. So the Lord rejected all of Israel. Okay. I mean, this is this is the Bible. You're not not just talking about one tribe. He said the Lord rejected all the tribe of all the tribes of Israel. So how could he reject them and then just come back to them? That's the reason why he made another covenant. But the problem with the the Christians and Paul is, and no disrespect, no disrespect at all, because you, my brother, it ain't about winning no argument. It ain't about none of that, man. This is brotherhood. This is just real deal we building. But the Bible says that he rejected all of the seed of Israel. What you think about that? I think that that's what's written. That's what happened because the father divorced us. But if we go into the revelation, that's why it's the marriage supper unto the lamb marrying his son. Oh, okay. So, we're, so we, we will be married unto the son. And the son is, the son is, um, can we say he's married unto the father? But the son is of the father. So the oh. father's going to rule over it. So the father would rule over the son, the husband, as the husband would rule over his wife, Jerusalem, the people, us. Okay, so y'all believe that God rejected Israel, but 
um, the uh, the the husband men that took the husband, not husband men, because those are two different things. But the husband mm-hmm. of um, the nation of Israel is now Jesus. Okay, so that's where y'all get it. Okay, all right. No, 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 no. What the, the nation of Israel is now? No, the nation of Israel. Uh, once again, I'm just going to put it that those who are called by His name. Because the scriptures say, the scriptures say, what is it, in Isaiah 14? Is Isaiah 14 and 1? What, the Lord will have mercy on Israel, or what? Which one do you want? That he will gather Israel, and people will be gathered to them, and they will serve them, that one? Isaiah 14, yeah. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel. Yeah. And set them in their own land. Yeah. And the stranger shall be joined with them, and okay. they shall cleave to the house of to the house of Jacob. Uh-huh. Now, the, the stranger cleaving to the house of Jacob and all that—that's that's what I that, that's I pointed out the the heathen, the Gentile. That's the Gentile. So that answers your question about you. Yeah. I, Go ahead. Brother, Go ahead. I, I never I've never denied any of that okay. because the scriptures say that there are heathen and Gentiles that are called by His name. And then he even asks, who will inherit the heathen? He even says, keep thy conversation honest amongst the Gentile. Okay. All, All right. right. So I'm not, I'm not denying any of these things. I just don't believe that, that, that the Hittites and all, I don't believe that those that you pointed out are actual Gentiles. Yeah. I believe, as it says, they polluted themselves with Gentile ways, the same way Israel polluted themselves with Gentile ways and they and and uh, Judah called them Gentiles and then when they said Lord shall we go to the dispersed among the Gentiles well the dispersed is still them northern tribe but still Gentiles yeah so, that whole I, thing that whole I, northern I, tribe I, thing northern kingdom thing northern kingdom is not mentioned one time in the entire new testament and that gentiles um goes for both the houses of israel because you had southern kingdom gentiles that was in the greek captivity that wasn't circumcised such as timothy he was considered a gentile because he was living his father was a greek he was living as a gentile uncircumcised okay Although the Bible says if you're not circumcised, you're going to be cut off. But then you have the northern kingdom, which remained over there in the remnants of them um, from Naphtali and all the the remnants of the northern kingdom that was considered not a people. Like I, I got that whole understanding about the Israelites assimilating into Gentiles. But the thing is, in Matthew 21, 43, He is specifically speaking of a non-Israelite nation. Think about it. Jesus was very, he he used the word lost sheep. He used the word Israelite. He used all those terms, okay? This goes into provoking Israel to jealousy. I believe that Jesus was in agreement with Ezra. And Ezra, brother, the scriptures I gave you was, was very clear of God going to another nation, not Israel. Okay. And so, you know, that's that's just what I presented, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, it's all good. We definitely, we definitely uh we hit right now, we're over an hour. Um any um things you want to go over, I'll let you go over some things. I give you another uh shoot. I got about I'm free to about 5.35, you know. If you want to roll out to about 5.30, that's cool with me. Um, any so things you want to go? We can keep going. We can keep going. Um, okay. Back and forth if you want, however you want to do it. All right. I'd like, I'd, I'd like, to, I'd like to look at Isaiah 14 um, as what we know from 14.1 and the two, right? And Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Would yeah. I don't I don't take it the way I don't take it the way the camps take that um, servants. I I look at it as like employees employeeship, right? Um, okay. And they shall and they shall take them captives who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Well, 
I try to explain it like we're in that situation now where um, our oppressors are those people who rule over the corporations, those things that have us all in this situation, everybody. But whether you call yourself an Israelite or not or anything like that, we're all under this type of system oppression that we're all under right now. So that's how I break it down in that, in that when the Lord says that they shall possess their land and the Lord will have them for servants and handmaids, that is just like he's making us, as make us the head and the tail. You could say that we would be uh, the runners of the corporations, government systems and things like that uh, under his, his rule, his word. Okay. So if that, if we go to Isaiah 57 to the 16, he says, For I will not contend forever, neither will I always be wroth, for the spirit should fail before me, and the souls which I have made. All right? And that's all towards the children of Israel. So, um, brother, I, I, it, it, I agree with everything that you have said, how this, how the scriptures say it, but in the end, it's when they ask when the kingdom, when the kingdom will be restored to Israel, if there's another nation that come to provoke us to jealousy, it should be because we would want the kingdom to be restored to Israel. Oh, so hold on. Oh. Okay, so in, in Deuteronomy 32, um, mm-hmm. 21, that's where the first mention of this, besides Genesis, I can go to Genesis 49, 10 um, after this, but I want to go to Deuteronomy 32, 21 first. It says, um, they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Now, when you look at that, okay, Israel's man, Moses, he did not make it into the promised land. He didn't, okay? And it wasn't, Israel was wicked, man. Israel was, Israel was real wicked, man. And God kept giving Moses opportunity, like, why you love Israel so much? I want to wipe them out. I want to wipe them out, and I want to make of you a great nation, okay? And he did not he did not he he wanted to he wanted he wanted Israel to live and he ended up what happening violating God's commandment because God's commandments was if you do evil I'm gonna repay you back okay remember Moses was like hey these people are sinning take my name out of the book of life he he wanted to die for Israel God was like nope whoever sins is that who I'm taking out of the book of life and is and uh Moses it looked it like he died because they was complaining but actually Moses died because he struck the rock twice he was supposed to speak to the rock he was supposed to glorify the most high and then he got taken out. So when I look at Deuteronomy 32, 21, when I look at scriptures like God has rejected all the seed of Israel, when I look at Ezra and he's talking about how he just can't put up with Israel no longer. He just he's just like, you know what? You know what? I'm going to reject you. I'm going to reject you. I'm not going to have no mercy on your children. I'm about to go to another people. I'm going to go to a new nation okay and i'm and i'm seeing all that now i have to go to genesis 49 10 because this right here is another scripture a lot of brothers have a hard time interpreting and it's in genesis 49 10 it says the scepter that's the kingship that's the rulers rulership that is a translation Speaking of the kingdom, the scepter, the scepter of the prophethood, the, the, the ruling staff shall not depart from Judah. Okay, it's letting you know it's going to stay with the nation of Judah right here. Then it says, nor a lawgiver. Now, a lawgiver is a prophet. Okay, a lawgiver. No prophet is going to 
leave with this scepterhood, okay, coming from Judah. He's telling you it's not going to go nowhere. But look what he says. He says, until Shiloh come. Until Shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And if you look that up, it, it's saying the gathering of the Gentiles. Um, the Bible says that Jesus was sent to the lost sheep. He was sent to the house of Israel. And according to the Bible, the way that they interpret it is that he died for the nation of Israel. If you if I mean, for those that believe that, that he was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But here in Genesis 49, 10, it is speaking of someone that would come. OK, and in this word, Shiloh is not speaking of a place. This is speaking of a person, not the Shiloh, the city. This is speak, speaking of a person because it identifies him as him. Until Shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So this, when I look at this scripture, this is another reference from the beginning. God seeing that he was going to have to go from Isaac to Ishmael. Okay. He was going to have, because he promised Ishmael that he would make of him a great nation in the beginning. That was God almighty. And remember, the only angel, the first time an angel appeared to somebody was to who? Who was the first person an angel appeared to, to anybody in the Bible? Moses. Nope. If you go to your Bible, type in angel. Type in angel. First time an angel appears on the scene, okay, is with who? Is with Hagar. Is with Ishmael. The first time an angel appears on the scene is to Ishmael. What's up with that? What's up with that? God had already seen this stuff. Now, I can keep going on and, and bring out history on how Islam started and all that stuff. But, but the common people that study, they know. They know how it all started. But this woman is the first person in the entire Bible to meet up with an angel okay god was not playing when he said that he was going to make ishmael a great nation he already seen the ending from the beginning israel was wicked israel killed their prophets they thought to kill jesus they brought other gods inside of the temple jesus called nobody the devil in the entire bible but israel and guess what israel is the only people in the bible that ever called jesus the devil OK, the Bible says that Israel did above all the heathen when it comes to wickedness. How is he going to bless you and give you the reward of the kingdom? I don't get that. I do not get that. OK, that all right there is something that um, a lot of people, they don't see. They act like Israelites was little angels. They don't understand that Israel did far above the heathen when it comes to wickedness. Brothers out there on, in purple, they getting all over Edom. They point the finger at all these other nations, getting on all the wickedness of all these other people. Don't you know that the Edomites was only allowed to revolt from under Judah's hand is because Judah broke God's commandments? We was high above all nations, okay? We was the ones that even a dog wouldn't even move their tongue towards us. They wouldn't even bark at us. Now look at us. It's been 2,600 years since we had a king. And these brothers out there on the streets want to just point the finger at everybody but their own selves. You see what I'm saying? I hear you. So, I hear you. But so, yeah, that's scripture I'm showing you. Um, Genesis 49, 10. A lot of people say that's that's Jesus. How could Jesus be the Shiloh if it's telling you the scepter will not leave Judah until Shiloh come? So that's telling you the scepter is going to leave the nation of Judah once Shiloh arrived. And the Bible well establishes that Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. I get, I get that what you're saying about the angel. My, my retort response to that is, 
that is all prophecy and promise being fulfilled where the Lord said to Abraham, I will multiply thy seed. He is thy, He is his seed. He is his seed. So when he told her to go back, all right, I could only imagine that it was so that the child could grow up under the fear and ammunition of the Lord according to Abraham's house. All right, so... Um, if Isaac and Abraham grew up in the same house, they come out with two different, very two different things. Uh, it's just an observation. If you want to look at it that way, I'm as a, just spitting that out as an observation. But I would contend to that in Genesis 16, that the Lord sent the angel to Hagar to make sure that Ishmael wasn't, well, he, whether he cast him out or when he did cast him out, he was under the fear and ammunition of the Lord. So I believe that Hagar was approached by that angel to keep them together in that house for that very reason. And it, it is the fulfilling of a promise, covenant, that I don't ever believe the Most High ever breaks covenants or promises that he says. So you don't believe he um, do, he, he broke his covenant with Israel? No. No, he 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 divorced the two nations, the two kingdoms. The scriptures say verbatim that God broke the covenant in Jeremiah thirty-one, word for word. It literally says it without adding any taco sauce or anything on it. Right here, it says, um, Jeremiah thirty-one, thirty-one. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took out, right. took took them out of not the a, hand. Not, not, yeah, not according, not according to. He's that making covenant. a new covenant. According the, okay, according to the new covenant. Okay, so he, he according and, to the new covenant. Yeah, and he literally says right. which covenant. I break which covenant they break. <laughs> Although I was a husband unto them. Okay. So he, he's telling you right there that why, why would you break a covenant? Why would, why a covenant had, why another covenant had to be established? Why does another one have to be established? Yeah, because there has to be another messenger. That's not from that nation. It makes no sense. Why would you have to make another covenant? If yeah, the that, 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 that covenant came, that covenant was the fulfillment of when he came and fulfilled all things concerning that covenant. When who came? When the Lord came. When the Lord came. So, oh, so you, oh, so you, so to you, you believe Jesus is God. Jesus is God, like God the Father? I don't believe in the Trinity. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. I ain't said no Trinity. I ain't said nothing about a Trinity. All I'm saying is, oh, okay. you believe that Jesus is God. I believe he's a God. He's the God that came out of the Father. Then that's he, all of us, right? Right, exactly. Then we all gods if Jesus is God. I, be, I believe that I believe that as it says, the God he, the children of God are those who do his will. What did the Lord say? He said, Those who do my father's will, that is my mother, that is my brother, that is so I'm not once again, bring that to everything that what you believe about the nation and all that. Okay? If you bring it to what he says about who's his brother, who's this, who's his that, yes, that's Gentiles, yes, that's Israelites, yes, that's Jews, yes, that's 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 whoever. But at so that time, I, he I, said I, he was only he he, and he didn't even say at that time. He literally says that he was a messenger to the Israelites, not to the whole world. He 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 literally told the woman she was a dog. Well, the woman, no, he didn't. He, <laughs> Yeah, but in 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 uh, what is it seven and six? He says, "Thou shalt not cast uh, thy pearls to the dogs." No, before swine. No, no, no. He said he told the woman, 
you shouldn't give that which is holy unto dogs. Mm-hmm. When she, and she said, true, Lord. Yeah. True, Lord. She humbled herself. Yeah, she recognized her place. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So at that point, she's not a dog. He was testing her faith. Because he says in Matthew 7, was it Matthew 7, 6? Thou shalt not cast thy, thy pearls to swine. Or to dogs, right? Is that, is that what is that? No, swine, sir. You don't say okay. nothing about dogs, yeah. Okay, so why would he why would he then do the same for her? He made a difference between the Israelites and the other nations, all I'm saying. He had 12 disciples. They all was Israelites. It wasn't no Gentile Israelites. And he was sent to the lost sheep. He said, I am not sent. He said, I am not sent but to the house, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's talking about Israel, right? Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. Sorry, we got it here, all right? Yeah. Matthew 7 and 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. So, he gave her something very holy. He healed He healed the, he healed the daughter. Because he said, great is thy faith, woman. Well, she said, so, even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She acknowledged herself as a dog. Are we sure about that? Because he said, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, period. Oh, but he gave her. But he, he, him like, healing her, he on. didn't say it was a dog. He didn't say it was holy. That's you adding. You're adding that. He, he, she said, but even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She was calling herself a All dog. Right. right. Yeah. Back to but if you go back to the 7 and 6, Matthew 7 and 6, give not that which is holy unto dogs. He gave her that. There was no falling of crumbs. There was no residue like like he healed somebody and she 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 sent her daughter and touched her his vistra like the other woman and she was, you know. There was well, no It wasn't for her. The healing was for her daughter that was back at home. Right. Yeah, she didn't so touch she him. She gave it to her. That, that, that's a big giving for her to believe that it was done. That's a big giving. Oh, great is thy faith, woman. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, so, okay. I, I, just don't, I just don't believe I don't believe that he's going to say that in Matthew 7 and 6 and then do a great thing like that when she goes home. She's going to say, this is what the Lord did. It, it, it's not going to say... This is what happened while he was doing something else, and the trickle effect. I got he, uh, my daughter got healed, so he gave something holy to her. I don't know. I think that's. I mean, that's your Bible interpretation. That's that's the whole thing with. Um, you know, you got actual scripture, and then you got Bible interpretation. Anybody can look at any scripture and interpret it any way they want. Like for instance, there's no there's no uh, scripture that says Jesus is God. Worship him. People just interpret it that way. You know? Well, worship... Worship means revere. Or re- to reverence somebody. I, we, I think a lot of times we have a very pinpoint, diligent meaning to it. Like, all right? So, worship is just the ultimate reverence to something. But we yeah. know... We know that the the Father is the ultimate, right? We, like we bow fully to Him, face to the floor. That's only right? that's only who we supposed to bow down to, according to the Bible. Correct, 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 correct. Because yeah, because the Lord said, Yahushai, my Lord, He said, He's our friend. He said, ye are my friends, for the, the servant know not what the master do, but we know what he does. And then if you go to Mark ten forty four, what does he say? The chiefest of you shall be servant to all. Well, he is the chiefest. He, he's the, chief, the chiefest. All right? Where, where it says that? Um, pardon? Where did he say he's the chiefest? 
I'm not saying the scripture doesn't say that. It yeah. just says Mark ten forty four. Yeah, because he said he said John the Baptist was greater. Pardon? He said John the Baptist was greater. Where did it say that? That John, when he says that John the Baptist was more than a prophet and that he was greater. But greater than who? Well, uh, the Lord said he was greater than John. Jesus the said, "There's no prophet that was greater than John." Did I say that? Huh? You said that Jesus was the chiefest. And Jesus says in Matthew eleven eleven, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, Jesus was born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Jesus was born of women. He was telling you that John the Baptist was greater than him. In, in what, Mark 10, 44? Uh, this is going to be Matthew eleven eleven. He says it in Luke seven twenty eight. <laughs> Among those that are born of women, there are no greater prophet than John the Baptist. Okay. We get that. And, and the prophets, Moses and the prophets, ended with John. That's what the scriptures say, too. What'd you say? So... Hold on, what'd you say? The scriptures, the scriptures also say Moses and the prophets ended with John. So Moses and the prophets, that's that covenant. As Hold on, what script? Oh, her. you just said a scripture. I don't know. I don't got no reference to that. What you just said. Because I'm giving you chapter and verse. I gave you Matthew 11, 11 and, John, and Luke 7, 28. Jesus said, among those that are born of women, and Jesus was born of a woman, he said, there's no greater prophet than John the Baptist. He was baptized by John the Baptist. Okay, I mean, according to the scriptures. So, what are you saying? That that he said Moses and what? Okay. Yeah, he, he, he was baptized by John the Baptist, and, Bap, and John the Baptist also confessed to his followers to follow him. No, when he, when John the him. Baptist had his own followers. John the, oh, John the Baptist told his followers that when you hear the voice of the Lord to follow it and that he wasn't even worthy to buckle his his uh, shoe. Okay. Like John the Baptist said he wasn't worthy to buckle the lace on the Lord's sandal. But, oh, so you're saying John the Baptist was following Jesus around? No, what, what I'm saying is John the Baptist prophesied of his coming. All right, so if we go to but what does that have to do with Jesus saying that John the Baptist is greater? The, he said there's no prophet greater than prophet. He said he was more than a prophet. And he was born of a woman. So where does it say that any other prophet is greater than John? John the Baptist is mentioned in the Quran. Paul is not mentioned in the Quran. John the Baptist is even mentioned in the Quran. So I'm just I'm just going by the scripture. He said there's no one born among women that is greater than John the Baptist. And you're finding that at Luke? This is in Matthew 11:11 11, 11, and is also in Luke 7:28. Okay, I'll look at Luke 7:28. I'm going to look at Luke 7:28. All right. For I say unto you, among those that are born, among those that are born of women, there what is say? not a greater prophet. Okay, what translation you got? I got uh, King James. All right, go ahead then. Okay, uh, starting at Luke 7. You can hear me, right? Can you hear me good? Yep. Okay, starting at Luke 7. 28, for I say unto you, oh, let's go to the, 20, to the 27, Luke 7, 27. This is he of whom it is written, behold, I send a messenger before thy face, before thy face. That, that's, a pro, that's, that's the fulfillment. The prophecy is saying he, the Lord said he's going to send a messenger before thy face. Thy face is whose red letter? I mean, we can interpret it. We can interpret it that way. Hold on. He's just quoting the scripture, uh, I, I, brother. I you hear me? I'm reading the scripture. 
I'm reading the scripture. Yeah. No, you just you just said that before thy face is is speaking of Jesus, but it didn't say that. Yes. It didn't oh, say listen. that. Listen, which which shall prepare thy way before thee. That's what the scripture yeah. says in Isaiah. That's how it's worded. Exactly. Yes. So yes. you believe that's the talking message. about Jesus. That's better. Just say, yeah. The messenger, the mess I believe the messenger is John the Baptist. The, okay. The the prepare thy way or thy face, that's Yahweh Shai. Let's go to the twenty eight. For I say unto you, all right, now now he's clearly saying, For I say unto you, among those, all those other prophets that are born of women. Hold on, where does it say all those other prophets, bro? You added, bro. You add it. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Bro, listen. When he says those, among those, messengers, among those, messengers. No, he ain't gonna say gonna, it. No. And, well, hold on. We're going to get... Brother, you got to let me finish reading because it's it's your verse in point and the word is right here. Okay? Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet. Those are the other Prophets. No. Are all Let's keep going. Then John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he who John the Baptist. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Who's least in the right. kingdom? Okay. Right. But okay. y'all say Jesus is the chiefest. Oh, now you, 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 you just said that, bro. Okay. Yeah. I know, no, no, I never said that that verse in Mark ten forty four is speaking directly about him. What I'm saying is, in over me, he said, he said, for the the head of every man is Christ, and the head of Christ is God. No, that that's Paul. That's Jesus. Paul, man. You know, I I have I have messages on Paul, man. Paul, no, that's brother. a whole nother message. Okay, <laughs> I do not accept can I, Paul. Can I, can I, can I, can I? Go ahead. Can I just can I just can I just do this? I just want to get to. I'm letting you. I'm letting you, but you go going. Go. go ahead. All right. So, with all that being said, there. All right. With all that being said, there about the prophets and John being the greatest of the prophets, but yet the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. All right, because the least in the kingdom is greater than he. He's coming to bring his gospel now. So his, what he's saying is that his gospel, his word, which he's about to bring, is greater than every word that came before him. Okay, that's All what right? you interpret. Now it's my turn. So it's, it's my turn, so man. John six, I, no, I, I did, Luke 16 and 16. Here's, 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 here's how it ties. All right? The, the law... And the prophets, the law, that is the law, not, I mean, the law, Moses, all of that, the Torah, all of that. And the prophets were until John, who? John the Baptist. There's not a greater one than him. So that's the pro the law and the prophets. Those no, no, Luke 16 born, is talking about something those else. that were born, you gotta let me finish. So you, bro, you you, so you going you can, around you you going around the board. You're not being fair, but, but I would have been done if you didn't interrupt me, so I could tell you why I say that those are the prophets, the women that were born amongst women. This is where I'm getting it from. Okay, the law and the prophets. There's none greater than him in seven to the twenty eight Luke. All right, the law and the prophets were until John, that's John the Baptist. Since that time, the kingdom of God, his, which is Yahushua's preaching, is preached and every man presseth into it. That's the gospel. The gospel is the kingdom of God. Okay, so in verse 16, he is saying the law of Moses and the prophets were until John. John came yeah, on the scene covenant, preaching the kingdom covenant. of God first. John was mm-hmm. preaching the kingdom of God first, is what he's saying. And repent, repentance, repent, repent. Yeah. John was preaching that first. It this is not connected nowhere until Luke seven. 
what we just looked at. Now, I want to say what I want to say because there's other people that don't believe like you. Okay, just like there's people that don't believe like me. So I have to straighten what I see in Luke 7, uh, 27. I want to start at verse 26. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet. Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is Jesus speaking of John the Baptist. Then he quotes the scripture. He doesn't say it's him. He doesn't say it's Yahweh Shai. He is just quoting the scripture verbatim. This is he. And he's noticing he's not talking about himself. He's talking about John. Of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. So according to this scripture, Jesus is literally confessing that John was a greater prophet than even him. Because the reason why I come up with this is because he said among those that are born of women. Women. Jesus was fully born of woman. Okay. He had no male intervention. I don't know if y'all believe that, but most Israelite camps believe Joseph was his father. But I don't believe Joseph was his father. I agree with the Quran. And it says, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Now, the least in the kingdom of God, I believe. Notice I said, I believe. I'm not saying the Bible says this. This is just my personal opinion. I'm not going to put no words in there that's not there. I believe this is speaking of another nation. This is going into what I believe the new religion that's about to get ready to come on the scene, which is Islam. OK, that's just what I believe, because he said least in the kingdom. He's and we know that. Israel was high above all nations. They was high above everything. So John the Baptist, to me, in the scripture, I believe that he is confessing that John the Baptist was a greater prophet. Jesus wasn't all about himself. He always looked at himself as a servant. It's the people that blew up his head. It's the gospel of John that literally blew Jesus up and gave him more deity than even the first gospel we received, which is Mark then Matthew, then Luke, all the way from the beginning, Matthew, Mark, Luke, then when you get to John, he's God, okay, so I don't believe that Jesus ever called himself God, and I believe Jesus never told nobody to worship him, and I believe that's going to be a judgment, I believe that's one of the main reasons why he's the Messiah, because he's going to come back, and he's going to clean up this mess of idolatry, People worshiping something or someone as though they're God. All right. But yeah, we definitely hit our time. I got to get to my prayer. <laughs> my prayer is right due. And uh, brother, right, bro. I definitely, definitely appreciate you coming on. I, I'm going to say this. Out of everybody I've debated in a discussion you have the most uh, manners, and um, I like that you are competitive and you are defensive and you believe what you believe is right, but at the same time, you're not disrespectful. You represent a better um, Christian or Israelite, uh, according to your faith, than all the guys I've debated. I wish they could have the same morals as you because you believe what you believe you're not going to be swayed but at the same time you know that this is bigger than winning a debate this is about a brotherhood that just began when we connected and brother every word you just said is the reason why i call you brother the quant sorry brother guy quant i want to get it right (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> all right yeah the word is true man I, 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 as I said I follow my lord red letter follow him man so these are the things I can also accredit to my daddy and him uh, my, 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 my my dad on earth father above us the most high God himself who we all bow our bended knee to pray to all right so brother I want to thank you 
with having me back on. And uh, let's, uh, on the personal side, we'll keep in touch, definitely, and for sure, man. We, we will do blessings to you and your family, my brother. And I appreciate you. And I, I, I want us to continue to bond and connect, all right? Definitely. For sure. Uh, you too. Many, many blessings unto you and yours. And I, I really, really appreciate you. I appreciate you, brother. That quant, man. I, I, I think you have. I, I, I don't think, man. I know you have an awesome soul and spirit, and, and a conviction that you love your people and you want to see them well, do well, and, and be pleasing <laughs> into the, in, in the eyes of God, man. I know that's that's in your heart. So let's go forward, brother, and let's make both of ourselves worthy and pleasing things for our creator and our most high God, man. Let's let's do that at the very least. All right, salam, salam, brother. Salam alaikum and shalom, shalom. It doesn't offend me to say either one because you my brother. And the same thing you said about me, brother, I see in yourself, all right? Excellent. Me neither, man. So, alaikum salam, shalom, and love, peace, and charity unto you and yours, house of David. All right, brother. All right, yours <laughs> too, Yatiel, Yatiel. Ben Titus. <laughs> All right. All right. Peace and charity. Peace and charity. Yeah, that's my brother right there, okay? Now, that brother, he presented his cause, but at the same time, he was respectful and he had manners, okay? And that's my brother, regardless what he believes, that's my brother. Um, and I encourage uh, you all to seek truth. Seek the truth. Shalom, shalom to my brothers in the Israelite community. And assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the